All right, so this is one of my favorite things, uh, self-treatment approaches. I've been using it uh, pretty much every morning for the past few weeks, and it addresses several, several problems that we run into problems with. Uh, people talk about tight hamstrings, tight calves, uh, plantar fasciitis, foot pain, uh, low back pain, neck pain. This is good for all of those, and it's a great um, posterior side, back side, whole body sort of a thing. Um, I like to do it in a variety of ways, uh, but it, it involves some kind of surface to, uh, to rest on. Uh, as an example, I will sometimes make use of the ottoman that I have out in the living room, and I will rest my hands on that. Uh, I've got a table here, so that's what I'll use this time. I also really, really like uh, the bathroom counter and sink. I love being able to take the edge of that and hook into the sink itself and use that for traction, which this table, you can see, isn't going to be very good for. But those are all variations that I might speak to and ways that I might approach this. So something in this kind of a realm and, uh, and that you can grab on is, and it won't move. It's really, really nice. We have this table. So what I do is, you know, most people try to, uh, when they have tight hamstrings, they tend to try and reach their, t their, uh, their toes. They try and stretch and lengthen and push. And that's your typical traditional stretching. It's not the best. Uh, you're trying to force the barrier instead of giving yourself uh, what you need for a good myofascial release. Instead, find yourself a support, like I've been saying, a lower ottoman, a countertop that's lower like a bathroom countertop is, something like this table, and you're just going to rest on that. Now, what you want to do next is lengthen through the backs of your legs. It's a bit like you're reaching your heels further into the floor and your sacrum tailbone up into the ceiling. Lengthen through the backs of your legs. You're not trying to go down, just gently lengthen. Now, we're not pushing this hard either. People will tend to, at first, try to be way too hard, and that will just tire you out. Don't do that. It's a waste of time. Instead, if you just sit there and breathe for a moment, and you start to feel the tensions that are already there, you'll start to find over the next three, five, ten minutes that you can begin to let go of some of those. It might be tension in the arch of your foot. It might be tension around your ankle. It might be tension in your pelvic floor or your glutes. Gradually, as you sit and breathe through that, you'll find it getting easier to be longer. That will tend to do what you see me doing right now. I'm not pushing. I am finding myself settling backwards here. This is why I like something to hold on to as well. My hamstrings are lengthening, my legs are softening, are, are uh, easing their tensions. And next, my lumbar spine, my back is starting to flatten, uh, to undo that curve that it has. Uh, people get way too curved right here. I'm starting to lengthen. And as that continues, I will gradually end up starting to straighten out my cervical spine, my neck as well. So many people have this computer desk texting neck sort of a thing where they're like this and they're jammed up here in the back of their head like that you want to let that lengthen too so that you're not only reaching heels into the floor and sacrum into the sky but you're also reaching sacrum tailbone towards the wall behind you and the top of your head not this not your forehead top of your head that direction it's a fantastic way to lengthen all that stuff that gets scrunched. And that might be all that I do. If I've got more time, I like to start to shift my hips to the side, which changes the angle through this hip. It gets really, really tight. It's surprising how tight that gets. I'll do that with both sides. It also gives you a little bit of a rotation through the femur and the hip bone, in the hip socket. 
and sink into that. I might follow up with a little bit of rotation through my spine and ribs. Now as a bonus, I don't always do this, but this is something that I've been trying uh, for the past few times and I've really been liking it. I have a lot of stuckness here in my diaphragm. My ribs don't move so well. I have trouble with how my guts move. So I find, and I'm, I'm, I tend to be flat through my back here, I'm finding that if I start to arch this way, that and allow myself to soften, give myself time to soften through here, and that starts to do a nice diaphragm release as well. And this is a little bit different than the softening thing that we talked about. I am actively contracting my back into extension. And it's not easy. And then I try to let myself notice where I'm not moving as I breathe. Where am I constantly clenching? Through here, through here and let those areas move in a bigger than normal breath. And then I usually find that it becomes much, much easier to reach down. And that helps my back, that helps my neck. I don't know if you can hear how my voice has changed. It's easier through there, that tension is less. Um, and that has been helping the pain in my feet that I've been having. Uh, my feet have been aching whenever I've not been on them for, for long enough, and that helps reduce that as well. <sighs> 